life, my whole identity, if I don't keep this person happy. But then a lot of people take advantage and then you resent the people taking advantage, but you created the situation. So I can, I can see why people in business, well, all these stats about businesses that fail, I can see it's a lot to do with the, the, the person in the business, not the business itself or the economy or the marketing or the sales. It's you and yeah. all the shadowy stuff that's going on in there. Yeah, I've had that where like a company will say, oh, will you come and speak? And I'll give my fee and they'll say, will you do it for less? And I'll agree. <laughs> And then oh, I'll, go in, I'll go into it with a kind of, sh- not a shitty attitude, but I'll go in feeling a little bit hard done by, yeah. even though I agreed to it. So it's like, yeah, again, this is why we say anger is the gateway emotion because those little frustrations can point us to where we're out of integrity, either yes. with ourselves or with others. And out of integrity means you're not doing what you said you'd do. Yeah, and this phrase, which only lately is really making sense to me, not living in line with your values. Mm. Because one, I didn't know my values. And now that I know my values, I'm starting to see areas in my life where I'm not in line. I'm like, that's painful. That's, I'm feeling, that's a, there's friction there for me now. And I can never, I'm aware of the friction. Was before I wasn't aware, it was still there, but I wasn't aware. But now I'm aware of it. I'm like, fuck, that's painful. Yeah. Got to figure out what the fuck that thing is. Yeah. And if someone threatens your values in any capacity, if the, this is generally where anger comes from is, you know, if I have a value on adventure and that's something I love. Yeah. And I start a relationship and all is good. And then after a couple of months, I feel in any capacity that my value of adventure is being threatened. That's going to elicit some anger in me. So yeah, our, 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 the values piece is really important again, actually for the warrior, because the warrior is not so much uh, going to act on how he feels. You can think of Dave, Gog- Dave Goggins maybe as, a, as an example of a um, someone who's very warrior. Yeah. Fuck your feelings, all yeah, that kind of yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, and you actually mentioned, because it's a nice proxy for that, you mentioned um, when we spoke before that you can use David Goggins when you need David Goggins. Mm. And I find, I've had conversations with many people who are, and again, it's tribal nowadays, but I, I, I love Goggins and I hate Goggins. Sure. But it's like, why, why do we love or hate Goggins? Use the Goggins when you need the Goggins and then yeah. use the compassion and all that when you need that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's an interesting example of that. And maybe taking him as an example, um, I don't know what he's like in his personal life, but obviously he's very strong in the warrior and it's kind of go, 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 go. Uh, we start by talking about the warrior because for a lot of men, that's the one that comes most natural, maybe the idea of doing, yes. getting things done, being strong, being brave, whatever it might be, all those things that a warrior represents. But if we think about a soldier who fights battles all day and doesn't have uh, the capacity to shift gears when they get home in the evening and be with their family, that's a one-dimensional man or one-dimensional woman, uh, depending on who the soldier is. And so um, this is where it, it's useful to be able to go beyond the warrior. Because again, for a lot of us men, warrior is all we know or all we've seen. We don't maybe recognize there's another part of me that's a lover, another part magician, another part king. Yeah. So that might segue us to lover potentially, would it? It might. A question I want to ask mm. you, do you want to maybe talk about some ways of restoring that balance now? Or do you want to cover all the archetypes and then come back and maybe talk about some practical... I can share, um, I can share a couple of ideas for warrior. Yeah. Um, first thing is values. So you brought that up. Knowing your values is key. Um, because your warrior just wants to take action, just wants to get things done. It's not a thinking part. It's not an emotive part. It's just going to follow instructions. So what are the instructions you follow? That's kind of your values. Okay. Does so that you, come from you or from the king? Uh, that's somewhat, somewhat kingly. Um, but I think it's good for the warrior to really have an awareness around like what, what you value. So just think about, you know, what do you want other people to say about you when you're not around? He's kind, he's compassionate, he's curious. What do you want people to say about you at your funeral? He was uh, someone who cared about community. He was someone that made an impact in the world. He was someone that looked after his family. Uh, who are you when you're at your best? I'm creative. I'm enthusiastic. I'm outgoing. So just answer some of these questions and pick the words that really jump out to you. And those might be your values. And, you know, I shared in a recent seminar that, if I have a value on compassion, every time I act compassionately, it's like I'm putting money in that bank account and I develop self-esteem because I'm investing in something that's important to me. And every time I act from the opposite place, I act from judgment rather than compassion, I'm withdrawing from the bank account. So if you're someone who's struggling with a healthy sense of self, struggling with confidence, struggling with self-esteem, there's a strong possibility you haven't invested in the things that you value. And if you're willing to start doing those things daily, it can make an impact. So that would be piece one, look at values. Uh, piece two will be look at where do you need boundaries? So boundaries could be where are the places in your life where these values are compromised. So if I value health and I'm drinking too much, I need a boundary on my alcohol intake. If I value compassion and I'm bitching about people and gossiping about people to my friends, I need a boundary around that. If I value uh, peace of mind and myself and my partner just are always in chaos, 
maybe I need a boundary with my partner, my friend, whoever it might be. So your values will inform your boundaries to a certain degree. Yeah. And your actions then should be informed by your values. So I say, I would say, tell people one of my values is being a compassionate person with myself and others. There's loads of times where I don't want to be compassionate with, with anyone, <laughs> myself or others. So if someone leaves a shitty comment on my social media, there's a part of me that wants to go for them and attack them. But I remember, I remind myself of who I want to be and, and that's important. So values, boundaries, actions, and then your other piece you might consider just with the, the warrior is to think about your vessel. So like warrior is related to your vitality, your energy, your capacity to go and make things happen in the world. You could have a very clear sense of your vision in life, but if you don't have energy to get up and do things, you're going to struggle. So whatever health is to you, I think that would be the other focus I would look at. Oh, I love that, man. That's such a lovely a lovely uh, roundup of those points. Um, an interesting exercise that Brian Lockle introduced me to was the, this idea of the eulogy, your funeral. Yes. Write what you think people would say about you now and then write what you think what you would like people to say about you. And I'm like, whoa, they are different, yeah. man. That's not how I'm living at the moment. So that brings it to the forefront of your awareness. Yeah. Uh, very, very useful if, uh, exercise there. One, one final piece that I, I don't know if I brought this up the last time I was here, but the idea of shadow values, maybe I did. Um, everyone's good on knowing their value. Not everyone's good. A lot of people are aware of their values. So value, compassion, playfulness, and adventure. And uh, that's one side of the coin. But if you can name your shadow values, so just go for the opposite. So the opposite of playfulness maybe is... Um, serious. Uh, the opposite of adventure is monotony and the opposite of compassionate is judgment. Um, it's good to be aware of those as well because they inform where you're tripping yourself up. Uh, it's all well and good focusing on the man you want to be, but it's also useful to be aware of, okay, who are you when you're not at your best? Yeah. That can be useful. 